For an article in the Winter 2011 UND Alumni Review, editor Milo Smith wrote that our next Sioux Award recipient might just be the most popular man in Winnipeg. It is probably not a stretch to say that Mark Chipman is very well liked in his hometown after he waged a long campaign to bring a National Hockey League team back to Winnipeg, one of the few cities that can claim to be more hockey crazy than even Grand Forks. The Winnipeg Jets moved to Phoenix in 1996, leaving the best fans in professional hockey, maybe the best fans of any sports team, in agony. Mark had served on a committee that tried to save the team, and as soon as they left, he began a campaign to get the team a team back. He worked with investors to build the MTS Center, a 15,000-seat arena in the heart of downtown Winnipeg. While he waited to lure a new NHL team, he bought a minor league team, the Manitoba Moose. That team's success proved that fan interest in hockey was still off the charts in Manitoba. He and his investment group, True North Sports and Entertainment came close to landing a team, but came up just a little bit short the first time around. Rather than give up, Mark dusted himself off, used the lessons learned, and succeeded when the Atlanta Thrashers needed saving in 2011. This was no small accomplishment. In order to move an NHL team, you have to pay the league $60 million. That's in addition to the purchase price. The news that professional hockey would return touched off a day of celebration in Winnipeg and was seen as a victory for all of Canada, which had lost not only the original Jets south of the border, but also the Quebec Nordiques. The Premier of Canada himself took time out from his busy schedule of running the country to issue a statement praising the news. National Hockey League Commissioner Gary Bettman congratulated Chipman on his patience, professionalism, perseverance, and persistence. Despite all of his success, Mark has never forgotten his time at UND. And how could he? Mark met his wife, Patty, in Grand Forks, and he says some of his best friends are people he met here. He says of his time playing football and earning two degrees at UND, quote, I'm not understating it to say that it was perhaps the best seven years of my life, end quote. Today, this one-time UND football player and graduate of the UND Law School runs an NHL team, and fans of the Jets acknowledge his company, True North Sports, every time they sing the Canadian National Anthem before each game. In all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true But to define Mark Chipman only in terms of hockey is to miss the full measure of the man. He had a thriving career before he shot to prominence as the man who brought professional hockey back to Winnipeg. Mark was an assistant district attorney in Florida after graduation and then entered private practice. Later, he returned to Winnipeg to help run his family's successful car dealership and commercial development interests. Mark has also always had a close connection to the community serving on nonprofit boards and promoting youth hockey. Mark and his wife, Patty, both play major roles in the events of the Winnipeg Jets True North Foundation that has raised $2.5 million since its inception in October 1996. The foundation recently made the first $100,000 payment on a promised $1 million donation to the charitable causes of the Royal Canadian Air Force which will be just one of more than 50 organizations that will benefit from the generosity of the True North Foundation.
Mark Chipman, we are so happy to be able to say that you are a UND grad, and we are honored to recognize all you have accomplished. Please come forward to accept your SUE Award. Well, uh, Deanna, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Sorry I drew the fourth spot tonight. <laughs> you guys can hang in with me for a couple more minutes. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gorecki, uh, Garfield, Catherine, uh, Jim and Sherry, just a real honor to be on the same stage with you all tonight. Um, when, when Tim O'Keefe and Steve Brecky called me to let me know that I had been selected to receive the Sioux Award several months ago, I really didn't know what to say, and I, I still don't. Um, say was surprised would be an understatement, probably not nearly as surprised as some of my teammates who are here tonight. Uh, you know, it's just not the type of call you, you expect to get. I don't think any of us who enter university or go through life uh, have the objective of someday being acknowledged by something uh, from which you receive so much. And as I reflected on the, over, it, over the weeks and months that followed, I and took notice of those who have received this high honor in previous years, including this year's recipients, I became uh, even a little more perplexed and, uh, and struck by a deep sense of irony. You see, uh, unlike Jim Kleinsaucer, uh, uh, I was right, rightfully not recruited by the University of North Dakota. <coughs> uh, rather, I had had the opportunity to attend some smaller schools in the state and on the way home uh, from a visit to one of those campuses, I was able to convince a high school teammate of mine um, to stop in in Grand Forks. And the only reason I was able to do that because he had been navigating this trip and um, we found ourselves in, in Devil's Lake on the way to Wahpeton. Uh, <laughs> it's a true story. We were supposed to be in Wahpeton at a certain time and we ended up in Devil's Lake. And anyhow, we got to Wahpeton, didn't make a very good impression and uh, so on the way back, I, th I thought, well, heck, we're going right by Grand Forks. Uh, you know, I knew a little bit about the Sioux, and, and so I convinced them to pull, pull in. Um, we were able to track down one of the assistant coaches and introduce ourselves. And fortunately, UND had a history of recruiting up in Winnipeg. In fact, at the time, the GM of our professional team up there, Paul Robson, um, was a former Sioux stando. To make a long story short, I was eventually offered a walk-on opportunity. I wasn't exactly sure what that meant. Uh, what it did mean was that I was not invited to the main training camp, but rather was expected to show up when school started. Now, I missed that part. Uh, so when I showed up in mid-August, uh, they weren't expecting me. Uh, my name wasn't on the roster, I didn't have a locker, uh, no equipment, and most importantly, no dorm room. All I had was a very awkward and brief meeting with the equipment manager. Too embarrassed to go home, I slept in my vehicle uh, for a few days, it's true, um, before our head coach, Gene Murphy, asked one of the assistants why some guy was living in a Volkswagen van in the parking lot of Memorial <laughs> Stadium. And, and Jeff Compton's here tonight will confirm this uh, if you think I'm making this up. Now I'm not sure if Murph felt sorry for me or what, but the next thing I knew I was geared up and made part of something very, very special. In fact, a couple weeks later, I got to play in the first game that year against Moorhead State. Team went 10 and 1 and won the conference. Now, I think uh, we all have people who've made a profound difference in our lives. Gene Murphy was such a person for me and countless, countless others that played for him. He uh, simply took a chance on me and gave me a gift that I could never repay. I could not have been more proud to be a part of the Sioux football family for the four years that followed. And those of us who uh, played our last game together 30 years ago will celebrate our time together at UND later this fall. Suffice it to say, those friendships are among the strongest and most enduring of my life. 
A few years ago, that team was inducted into the UND Hall of Fame, and I got to spend some time with Coach Murphy. It was like 1979 all over again. He had this way of making you feel so special and yet very grounded at the same time. The last time I saw him, I, I finally had a chance to introduce him to my wife, Patty. And I vividly remember him uh, pausing, looking at my wife and looking at me and saying, Chipman, you know, you always were a little bit of an overachiever, but this time you clearly outkicked your coverage. <laughs> I had to explain what that meant to, to my wife a few minutes later after a very awkward pause. Murph had a real unique way of putting things, and he was bang on. I wish I'd uh, known I would never get to see Murph again. As you know, um, he passed away just over a year ago, and I, I regret that I never really did get the chance to thank him and, and tell him what he did for me in the fall of 1979. Uh, then again, I'm not sure I could have ever found the right words. Um, in fact, it's uh, equally uh, difficult, if not impossible, to express how much this school and this community have meant to me. Suffice it to say that uh, deciding to pull off the interstate 33 years ago turned out to be the best thing I ever, I ever did. I was given the privilege of a world-class undergraduate education under pro um, professors like Dr. Mark Langamo, who's here tonight, uh, which led to an equally rewarding experience at the UND School of Law, who was led at the time by the wonderful Dean Jeremy Davis. But beyond all of those fantastic experiences, and beyond all the, the lessons I learned that pre prepared me for the career I've enjoyed, it was here, as Deanna said, that I met my wife, Patty. We left here for Florida in 1986 with our respective degrees, anxious to take on whatever lied ahead. But the pull of family here in North Dakota and back in Winnipeg soon brought us back. Since that time, we've been blessed beyond our comprehension in so many ways. I know Patty would agree that amongst the most cherished of those gifts we've received were those bestowed on us by the University of North Dakota. So please know that when I accept this honor tonight, it is on behalf of my wife, Patty, and our three daughters, Sarah, Annie, and Mary, with the understanding that it is actually our family that honors this great institution for the fantastic life it has given us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen, let's give another warm round of applause for our 2012 Young Alumni Achievement Award winners and our Sioux Award recipients. Jim, Sherry, Ben and Dorothy, Kathy, Gar and Mark, tonight you have joined a select and remarkable group of UND alumni and friends who are shining examples of North Dakota spirit. The way that you've all carried that spirit in your lives with you is an inspiration to us all. On behalf of all of us at the UND Alumni Association and Foundation, I'd like to invite you all to stay. Please enjoy a post-dinner reception, mingling, and reminiscing. Stay as long as you'd like. The room and the cash bar are yours and open for your enjoyment. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, and good evening. <laughs>